We did it! We found water on the moon! My mind is blown. We found liquid water on the light side of the moon. What, what better time to review the Bulova Lunar Pilot? It, there is no better time. Now is the best time to review this watch. Now, I'm going to be reviewing the Lunar Pilot that comes on the bracelet. I've had the one that comes on the leather strap and the nylon strap, but I opted to go with the bracelet version because I wear most of my watches on bracelets, and you can't buy the bracelet for those watches. Um, the lug holes are drilled differently, so you're not going to be able just to buy an aftermarket uh, Bulova strap. I guess not an aftermarket Bulova strap, but you're not be able to buy a Bulova strap and put, put it into the watch. Um, really odd story when it comes to the Bulova. So the story goes, you guys have heard it, uh, Commander David Scott was on the Apollo 15 mission and his Omega Speedmaster, the Omega Speedmasters that they give to every single um, astronaut during the Apollo missions, the crystal popped off. Now, it was an acrylic crystal, so they're probably more prone to that type of thing, but like, how did the conversation go? You know, he gets on the phone like, uh, this is Commander David Scott. <laughs> Hi. No, I know you guys have given me your spiel on Bulova before, but no, I already told you guys they, they, you how much? Well, what am I going to say? Tell them that the crystal popped off? <laughs> They're going to buy that? I mean, that's a lot of money. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I'll tell them that the crystal popped off. All right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, put it in a, put it in an envelope. All right, yeah. Thanks, bye. Like, how did it go? His crystal, so if you guys don't know, every astronaut during the Apollo missions was given an Omega Speedmaster to use in the field. Um, in this case, the moon. Uh, they were allowed to bring their personal watches as backups. So Commander Scott was given a Bulova Lunar Pilot um, as his personal watch. And the Bulova was actually designed to closely resemble the Speedmaster so you, you know, the astronauts wouldn't have a difficult time switching between one or the other. So between the EVA 2 and EVA 3 lunar outings, um, the crystal on Commander Scott's Omega popped off, so he had to resort to his backup Bulova. And this one actually went on auction, and it sold for over, I think, $1.2 million a few years ago. So after that, Bulova decided to hone in to channel their inner Omega and uh, create a line of moon watches, I should say. Overall, just to give you guys a little spoiler, I like this watch. I like it a lot. So let's flip the camera so I can give you guys a closer look at the bull of a Lunar Pilot. All right, and when you get the Lunar Pilot, it's gonna come in this box, has the word Bulova on top, and inside the box is another box. So let's take this out. Another Bulova, nice matte gray finish on the box. You're gonna get the watch like this, take it out here, because it has some cool paperwork at the bottom here. Put this off to the side. You're gonna get a warranty card and this little booklet here. And it's gonna go through all the, um, you know, Apollo 15 mission, everything leading up to it. It's a nice, cool little booklet. Now authentically recreated. Everything like that. So it's a nice little cool piece to look at if you ever want to read up on it. Um, so yeah, let's get to the watch itself. So here it is. The Bull of a Lunar Pilot. All right, so let's start off with the dimensions first. It's going to be a 45 millimeter diameter and a 53 millimeter lug to lug. So it's pretty big overall. Case thickness of 13.2 millimeters. And that crystal kind of sits up a little higher above the case by about a millimeter. Um, it's got a lug width of 20 millimeters and the bracelet doesn't taper at all. It stays 20. Um, <clears throat> throughout the length of the bracelet. And it weighs in at 176 grams, so it's pretty hefty. 
the crown, you're not going to be operating that a lot um, with it being a quartz movement, but it is uh, about eight millimeters and only about 50 millimeters of water resistance. So, you know, you don't want to get this thing too wet. I mean, I, I'm on the fence on whether or not uh, water resistance plays that big a role. Like I'm not going to worry about a splash on my wrist or anything like that, but, um, they just dis did discover water on the moon. So, um, maybe we need to up that <laughs> water resistance rating. All right. So let's take a look at the case first. The case itself is uh, sandblasted and it has like this matte finish to it. So let me see if I can get a good shot here for you guys to get a good look. So you can see the difference between the case and even up here, um, that looks to be brushed. And then the bracelet is brushed here. So you can see the kind of contrasting material or not material, but the contrasting finish. Um, between the brush of the bracelet and the bead blast of the case itself. Um, offers a really good like tool watch aesthetic, which I mean, this is a moon watch, so it's it's pretty good. You know, it, it fits the aesthetic pretty well. Um, it is, they do have brushed pushers here. So it kind of offers like a little bit of contrast and material shape. Uh, the crown is signed with the uh, Bulova tuning fork logo. So I just get this little bath. So I might have some residue left on there. Uh, push pull crown. So there's the first position where you can adjust the date. Very nice acting. And then pull it out again. It does hack. That's the running seconds hand at the bottom there. So if you push it all the way in, you're going to see it go. It ticks at two times a second versus just one time. So it just, uh, I guess it just indicated the high performance quartz. You can see it says 262,000 Hertz um, at the bottom there. So overall, very nice, very good weight to it. Um, you see how the lugs kind of tapered down there at the ends. With it being a little bit bigger, I mean, I'm a bigger guy, so I have seven and a half inch wrist that doesn't feel too cumbersome on my wrist, but some other people might have, uh, that have smaller wrists might, you know, it might just take up too much real estate. And that's what I've heard. Like one of the biggest complaints on this watch is that it, uh, it's just really odd sized. All right, let's take a look at this dial here. So I'm going to start by pushing this top pusher here and it's going to start the sweeping seconds hand on the outside there. Right here, the sub dial is measuring up to a 20th of a second. And so it's going and it has the, you know, the zero, two, four, six, eight. And then in between it's actually measures, you know, three, five, seven, nine, and then it measures the half distance in between. Um, this dial right here is the running seconds hand of just, you know, regular timekeeping. And over here is the elapsed minutes. So here at 30 seconds, you're going to notice that this small sub dial has stopped. Now, this is just a power saving function. It's actually still recording it in the background. So if I press stop here, it's gonna jump there to uh, 0.65 seconds. So we're gonna start that running again. Over here, like I said, this is the elapsed minute. Um, this is a gradual, it doesn't click over. It's just a gradual um, minute counter. So we're just gonna let this keep going here for a, a while here. So like I said, on the outside is this tachometer scale or tachymeter scale. And as you can see, it, it sits above the dial itself. So it, it offers like, the dial has a very good like feel of depth. Like it, everything is just feels like it, it works. And it's a very unique layout. So as you can see, the um, seconds track on the inside is actually recessed. And it gives the dial a sense of depth, um, which is really unique and it works out very well. Um, and then even in the sub dials, those have like a kind of sunburst effect with like um, concentric rings that run around. So it offers a really cool uh, difference between the sub dials and the, just the matte black um, dial itself you know, the main dial.
So it's just a really cool way it plays with the light. It offers a really cool depth. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and stop this here. We'll stop the chronograph. And while that one stops, this one is going to reset. So I want you to watch these dials here. This one is going to snap back and this second is going to slowly reset and this one also will slowly reset here. So let's uh, push this in. So everything resets to its proper place and uh, very nice and neat. If you wanted to adjust it, like if it's off, um, I think you just pull the crown out to the first position and then you hold one of the pushers and then it can it will slowly tick over. So um, that's just a little cool thing. If you want to adjust it, you don't have to take it into a watch dealer. I actually should make a watch for dummies series. I think that would work out pretty well. Um, let's see what else we have here. We have baton style indices here, and then at the three, six, and nine, we have these half batons. Um, so they don't really interfere with the sub dials. You're not cutting those off. It actually looks very nice here. And then at the top, we have the double thick um, baton style, or I guess double wide baton. Um, at the four o'clock, four thirty, we have the date window, which matches pretty nicely. Yeah, one cool thing about this loom here is that it is blue. So it offers like a very cool futuristic vibe when you take a look at it at night. All right, moving on to the bracelet itself. 20 millimeters uh, all the way down, no taper whatsoever to a butterfly clasp it has a laser etched Bulova tuning fork logo um, and the Butterfly clasp itself is very solid, very sec very secure, I should say. Um, has half links, full links. I took out, I think, the half links on this, but it does offer half links. Uh, push pin style. So you might not get the exact fit that you want. There are no micro adjusts. But for me, I find that it, um, it works out pretty well. And so just something of note when it comes to the bracelet, I've owned two Lunar Pilots. Uh, I've owned the one with the leather and nylon strap and I've owned this one. And you cannot, the, the lug holes that are drilled into the um, lugs for the bracelet itself to work are drilled in different positions. Um, so the metal bracelet here, if you're looking just to buy a metal bracelet and put it on the leather version, it's not gonna fit. Uh, they don't offer a, a metal band for that. So. That's why I had to sell that and uh, buy the metal version. I because I prefer on the bracelet. So, all right. So let's take a look at that case back here. So we have a screw in case back. Um, here we can see it says high performance quartz, sapphire glass, stainless steel, water resist up to 50 meters. Um, the bull of a tuning fork here, uh, Apollo 15. The dates that the mission took place. Eva 3 was the mission that actually this watch went to the surface of the moon. Um, and then here's the location where the astronauts landed back on Earth. Here we can see, so it doesn't have drilled lug holes. So here's the um, areas where you can take the band off here and here. Um, and then here we have these screws. These are for the pushers themselves because they operate like on a hinge system. So we, they haven't pushed in yet, but I guess there it is pushing it in, stopping. But so that's how they hold the pushers on. So it's a very nice, crisp, clean case back here. It shows you exactly what you want to see. Uh, very commemorative, very cool to see. So. so here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. Now this is pushing the limits of my wrist size. Um, maybe two millimeters smaller would be the most ideal, maybe 42, 43 millimeter, but it doesn't look too bad like this. Um, let me just bring in a second watch here. Uh, let's see what I can get here. On the left is gonna be the Bull of a Lunar Pilot, and on the right is the Yema Superman GMT. Now the Yema is a 41 millimeter, and like I said, the Bull of a is a 45 millimeter. They look pretty comparable. Um, you could see the size difference a little bit. Um, 
they could have just shaved off just a few more millimeters. I don't know why they didn't, but you know, that is off the wrist there. So it's not the biggest watch, but yeah, you could definitely tell. All right, well, with that being said, let's go ahead and flip the camera so I can give you my final thoughts and opinions. So there it is, the Bulova Lunar Pilot. Um, let me go ahead and give you guys a rundown on the watch itself. First of all, great build quality. Uh, for being sub $1,000, feels really good. The clasp, very solid. The pushers feel good. The sweeping function's good. The chronograph is good. Uh, everything else, for being like a quartz chronograph, it's pretty much the best you can get. Um, when it comes to the look itself, it's a nice, I don't know, you can't probably see it there, but the, the crispness of the dial and of the numerals really pop. Just having different layers of the dial itself, so you have like that main dial, you have the tachymeter scale above it, the seconds track recessed below it, and even the change of the texture on the sub dials looks very neat matching date window it, it pulls everything together it looks like it should um, nothing looks out of place has a great history obviously the only other watch aside from the speedmaster to be on the moon it's a good alternative to the speedmaster because you still have that history with it being on the moon like no other watch can say that aside from the speedmaster so you're going to save a lot of money buying this watch that actually has the same history as the Speedmaster. Um, and it, the movement itself is amazing. Plus or minus 10 seconds a year, very good. Um, I don't know if there's, I think that's probably the most accurate quartz watch there is aside from there being one that gets a radio signal. All right, let's move on to the cons now. So first con, it's gonna be the size. Um, for me, it fits fine but I have a seven and a half inch wrist. So if you're around that size, then you're gonna be good to go. If you have anything lower, it might, it might be a little bit more difficult to, to justify buying it. Um, Speedmaster reduced, you know, something like 39 and a half millimeter probably would, would work better, but they need to shrink this down a little bit just to make it more accessible to other people. Cause even at 45 millimeters, it is pushing my limits. Um, and then when it comes to the case finishing, that's like a, a brushed, not necessarily brushed, I should say, a brushed band meeting right up against a bead blasted case, it kind of looks off. It doesn't look like it flows together. So that's one negative. Um, while the band does match the crown and the pushers, there's just not enough there. They need to either add some sort of bead blasting on the center link or on the outside links something to bring it in. it just it looks a little bit off when you're looking at it the only other negative is if you wanted to do the one with the metal bracelet you're gonna have to buy that version of the watch you cannot buy the metal bracelet with the commemorative um nylon strap and leather option which kind of sucks it's just the way that the the lug holes are drilled that's not going to fit perfectly now you can put an aftermarket band on there but i like the look of having it butt up right against there. So I'm gonna try something a little bit different here. And it's not necessarily what I recommend buying the watch, is what I would recommend buying it for. So I bought this watch for $315 on Amazon. Um, that's probably the cheapest I've seen it, at least on the metal strap. On eBay, you could find a used one for about 300 bucks. Um, brand new, I've seen these go all the way up to like 500. If you're looking at I think a fair price would be if you're looking at somewhere around $350 or to $450, you're not going to be disappointed in the purchase. As long as you know that it may be slightly too big. Um, but aside from that, I would probably spend something around there, about $350, $450. I got a deal at $315, but you could find them on eBay used for about $300, $330, somewhere around there. All right, so that's it, the Bull of a Lunar Pilot. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite part of the watch is or what your favorite space watch is. And um, go ahead, share this video, subscribe. And I'm gonna pop up two videos here, two videos. It's gonna be, um, I don't know, my video, my buddy's video, switching it up a little bit. Subscribe button in the middle. I'll catch you guys later.